Welcome back to Higher Hertz. My name is Alexis and I'm here today with another violin lesson video for you guys. And today we're going to be talking about your health in the violin. Playing a musical instrument is often considered something that's really healthy. It's often good for us mentally, emotionally. We can build awesome problem solving skills um, from learning the instrument. Um, and it can also just be a great social thing that you can do. You can go to concerts, you can perform with other people, um, taking lessons. Uh, I just think it's all over something that can really benefit one's life learning a musical instrument. And you don't have to be really professional. Um, there's all sorts of violinists and other kinds of musicians um, who learn the instruments in all sorts of different ways and to all sorts of different levels. Now there are some downsides, unfortunately, to playing the violin. Just like doing any activity, one can get injured. It always blew my mind a little when I learned um, about when people would be typing on a keyboard, how um, it can uh, hurt your arms and your, uh, your forearms, your wrists, your fingers, that sort of thing. Those same sorts of things can happen from playing violin from those repetitive motions. Um, as well as there are all sorts of um, issues that people can suffer from while playing the violin with uh, shoulders. I actually suffered a really severe shoulder injury um, from playing violin and I had to relearn how to hold my bow arm. Um, people can also injure their backs, I've heard. Um, I've even seen people who have one rib that sticks out further than the other. Um, and I know for um, different instruments, there can be other, other kinds of things. Also, neck injuries, um, that sort of thing. So we want to be able to avoid those as much as possible. And it all comes back to, of course, being really cognizant while you're playing, uh, making sure that you're using really good technique. It can be hard as we're learning the instrument um, if we haven't been doing it for a long time um, because we... We're just not familiar yet with how our body should move in order to play healthily. If you're feeling pain and not just, you know, sore from using your muscles, if you're feeling like intense or like poking sort of pain, then always stop, take a break. Stretching is actually really helpful with playing violin. It's something that I'll do before, after, during practicing. Um, and then of course I also enjoy exercising quite a bit and um, doing lots of stretching and strengthening exercises for your back, shoulder, your arms, um, that sort of thing can be really great for helping you play in a way that is healthy. And of course, there's also all sorts of other benefits to exercising. Um, but we want to take care of ourselves physically while playing the instrument so that you can keep playing. Because it's such a bummer when, you know, you do get some kind of physical injury and you're not able to play for a while. So you always just want to, if you can, stay on top of, of those sorts of things. See a doctor if you're feeling pain. Don't ignore it. Um, and always seek professional help. Now there's other sides to playing violin that can be a bit tricky as well. Oftentimes, music can be used um, to help us emotionally, mentally. Um, there's music therapy, that sort of thing. But what can happen too is it can sort of, instead of like helping us mentally, sometimes it can actually cause problems over time. Um, and often this can come from pushing ourselves too hard having too high of expectations for ourselves, thinking, I need to practice eight hours a day and like, I can never take a break. And all of that kind of mindset can be good really occasionally if you really need to get something done. But for the most part, consistency is gonna be what helps you stay healthy and achieve your goals. Now, mentally, there are... Um, I have suffered from anxiety problems related to music. I get really nervous before I perform, that sort of thing. Um, and using yoga, meditation, um, learning different kinds of breathing exercises, learning how to really center and ground myself 
so that I feel like just really in control of myself before I play has helped a lot with that. I know there are people who will seek um, help more professionally. You can always see your doctor, psychiatrist. Um, there are different medications, that sort of thing that can help. But of course, that all needs to be diagnosed and treated with, um, with a professional. I think the most important thing with playing our instruments um, comes back to perhaps when we first started learning our instruments or what, what inspired us to even pick up a violin in the first place. And I remember um, as a young girl that it was, you know, seeing someone I know perform and I was like, wow, I just really want to be able to do that someday. I just think that would be so cool. And I never want to be able to lose that sort of wonder about the instrument, that sort of um, inspiration. Um, I've spent a lot of time at music school or on my own practicing really hard, taking lots of lessons from different instructors. And the way to just be healthy about all of that is to remember why you're playing the instrument in the first place. What was it that inspired you? Is it the sound, the instrument? Maybe you had this daydream while you were listening to music or really inspired something in you. And I think that if we can keep that kind of perspective in our minds um, while we're playing and learning the instrument, that that can be one of the things that keeps us the healthiest. Because if you're really concerned more about the music, I think that it will help eliminate some of those more toxic behaviors that can kind of happen from viewing music only as um, like a, a goal. Like, I, I want to get into music school. I want to win this audition. I want to play the best I, I possibly can play. And those are awesome. Never lose sight of your goals. But keep in mind that as you're, as you're practicing, as you're learning, it can be really easy to get too wrapped up in, in these, these mindsets that will, will ultimately cause more damage than good for you. So keeping all that in mind, as, an, as a violinist, it can be easy to kind of start feeling like I'm not connected to the rest of the world. So for myself personally, to stay healthy with violin um, and, and being a musician as my career, it's really important to stay healthy in all the areas of my life because I find that when you have balance throughout everything that you're working on, not just with um, you know your, your physical health with the violin, but being really cognizant about what you eat, how you exercise, how much sleep you're getting. Are you taking care of things that you need to take care of on a personal level? Are you staying connected with the people that you love? Those sorts of things are all going to come back to how well you're playing. And I think the more balanced um, one can be in one's personal life, the more balanced one can be in their musical life. Um, a lot of the music that I'm inspired to play comes from feeling connected to all the other really wonderful um, parts of my own life. So you can see staying healthy with the violin comes from being balanced. It comes from being really cognizant of how you're playing physically, knowing the technique of the instrument, um, knowing a lot about yourself. How do you fit into the world? What kinds of dreams and goals do you have for yourself? but also remembering to love and cherish yourself every day and not to push yourself to a point that is going to then cause you maybe to not even want to play the instrument, which can be, which can be really hard when, when you're using the instrument so much to um, help balance your, yourself in other ways for your life. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys on um, how to be really healthy with the violin um, and how to use the violin to, you know, be balanced throughout your life and how to take care of yourself 
with your health and your violin. Really appreciate you guys watching. Please leave any comments, or questions you have below. I always love hearing what you guys have to say. This is another production with Higher Hertz. My name is Alexis, and I'll see you guys in the next one.